we'd like to welcome all these lovely people that have given up their time to come in and tell us what it was like for them during World War II. And I have warned them that you've got lots of questions and that you're going to write notes. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Mrs. Testo, and I'm the Deputy Head of the School, so sorry I didn't introduce myself. So, I think we should start straight away. So, ladies and the gentlemen have all got name badges on, and I will come to you and say, I'm looking for your name badge because they want to write quotes of what you're actually saying. So, okay, <laughs> not nothing to worry about. So, if I say your name, that's why I'm saying it. Okay. Right, so we're going to start, first of all, with questions on evacuation. And the first question is from Lucy Grandy in class nine. Right, stand up, Lucy, that'd be a good idea. So were you evacuated, and if so, where? So who would like to start? Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Pilkington. I was evacuated to the United States. Um, and I lived in Philadelphia. What happened was, I was listening to the wireless. Wireless is what we used to call radios. Um, and there's a talk about people who, the boys and girls who've been evacuated from America, and I apparently said to my mother, oh, that sounds like fun. And she had a letter from her cousin in America who said, do you know anybody who wants to come to America? So off I went. Okay, this is white. White. Mr. I lived in Portsmouth, and I was only nine when we went to for a house. So I knew you to work out how long I am now. All our adults knew the war was coming. And all the children in Portsmouth, where I lived, had to be evacuated. So they had to leave their homes, leave their mummies and daddies, and go to a strange place. Now, I didn't have to go quite to a strange place because my grandma lived in Sheffield, down the road, and so I came there. And I went to school, just like you do, at Sheffield Village School. But when I was 11, I went to a different school, so I was evacuated again to Winchester. And there I lived in foster homes, which weren't very nice, but I did like my school, and I stayed there until I was 15. But we did have uh, air raids, and I got a, a, a gas mask for you to have a look at. Uh, I still got it after all these years. Thank you. Anyone else in the back of the This is Joan. I um, was evacuated from Portsmouth also. Um, I was 10 nearly 11 when we woke up. We were evacuated to a small village near here called Wick to Bremshaw. But like Mrs. White, I actually went to school in Winchester with Portsmouth Brown School. Oh, the Northern Brown. Northern Brown, yes. So we must have the same flowers in here under the new. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, we won't talk about the age. <laughs> and uh, I had several different billets all the time. I was in a very nice place at Brownshaw. I had two, three different billets there. But the following year, I had to take my what you call your 11 plus, I think now. And I went Sats. Sats now. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, we do those, don't we? And then I went to Winchester and I then had to be re-evacuated down into lodgings in Portsmouth because I, the war finished and I had not finish, well, what do you call it? 16, maybe O levels. And I was doing what they call school certificate in those days. So I went back there and I left when I was nearly 18. My mother lived, had moved up near Winchester because my aunt lived there. And I got to, I went, I was back there with a little brother. He's three years younger than me. And um, we were together at first, then we were separated. So of course I went to Winchester. And my mother lived at Rockley, which is a small village just outside. And so I went to work in Winchester in the end. So I was in Winchester for five or six years. And then two years later, I went back to work there. So I went there every day. Okay, thank you. 
Right, class 10. Class 10. Riley. Where is he? Oh, he's right there. Right. Would you like to stand up? Yeah, well done. How did you feel about being evacuated? So how did you feel about being evacuated? Anyone else like right to answer that? How did you feel? Mr. Parsons. Parsons. I was five years old when I was evacuated. I went to come from Portsmouth and uh, I remember vaguely cracking up, getting me into the case and they gave us a little a few sandwiches and we walked down to uh, Caution Railway Station and we had mixed of feelings because uh, it, we were not trained at all. And uh, to leave home and leave your mother, it was a big old deal. We went to Salisbury, and then from Salisbury, we was taken on to a place called Wilton. Now, the people we had, obviously, I would have thought, but they only had us because they wanted the money, because uh, we were treated very rough. We were very hungry, and um, I feel now I was very frightened because there was a river running by and they said that if, if we misbehaved they would throw us in there. Of course I was only small and uh, I believed them. We didn't go to school then and for some other reason, I don't know why because I was only small, but uh, a year later I was evacuated at a place called Solomon's Lane. You know that place, don't you? <laughs> and it was just up the road called Hoarder's Wood. Some of you might know it. And uh, before this school was here, I was walking down the road one day, and it was just where the school is now, a doodle bug. Now, I don't know if you know what a doodle bug is, but it's a flying bomb. And uh, there's no pilot in it, of course. And as it came, it stopped just where I was. And it came down into a big stone just over, just over the road. And um, it was quite frightening. But you'd be along sometimes at I had to take a dog for a walk quite often and you would hear shells and bombs coming down quite often in this area. And once I was in Shenfield School and uh, I had a boy with me sitting with him and the next day he wasn't there. A bomb dropped in shore heath and he was killed. So even though it was out the country, there was still quite a lot going on around this area. Class 11, Izzy. Um, did you like the people you were sent to live with? Did you like the people you were evacuated? Did you like the people you were sent to live with? Sorry.
class 10 one now. Class 10, and that is Imogen. Imogen. What did you take with you when you were evacuated? What did you take with you? So we all went there for the pack, for my little brother and I. We had a clean set of clothes and a spare, because in those days you only had three of everything. You had a pair on, a pair in the wash, and a pair clean in the drawer in case of accidents. You had your school uniform, shoes, and you had to take sandwiches on the journey, because we went either by bus or train, we went anywhere. And, and anything else, you weren't allowed to take a lot. You were allowed to take no toys or anything, but I was crafty enough, you know, because I like reading. So I had to say a book, didn't I? But other than that, you, were, you had to travel very light because it just wasn't the room. And you couldn't take your favourite things because usually they stayed at home. And quite honestly, I didn't see mine for years because my mother kept moving with my twin brother and sister who were only four at the time. <coughs> So she moved out of course with the Navy staff because my dad was in the Royal Navy and he wrote her and said, move out. So that's what she did. So you weren't allowed to take very much at all. Certainly no luxury things like cuddly toys or, you know, certainly not anything that you wouldn't be able to manage without. What they called luxuries in those days were not what we call luxuries now. No. Or necessities. No. Right? Okay. Thank you. Okay, class 11, class 11, Tom, Tom Armstrong. Did, you, did you get split up from the brothers and sisters? Yes, I think, did you get split up? Yes, so we were together at first, but um, we had to move our first thing because the lady was expecting a baby, so we, we were never together again. Okay, class 9. Class nine, and that is an uh, Matthew. Did you get to visit home? What about Christmas? Did you get to visit home when you were evacuated? What about Christmas? Class 11, 
of that. What was school like during the war? So what was school like during the war? Who was like to answer that? Sorry? You did? Um, we had a head master who showed the school called Mr. Then, so when it went through there, 
they could breed. I uh, think we had gas mushroom, I can't quite remember, probably once a week at school, and you had to take your gas mask everywhere with you. And uh, put the gas mask on, and then we had to put a bit of paper here, and if you were breathing, the paper you could just stay on. If you couldn't breathe, it would just fall off. Very good at that. But we never had to use it, so that was good, wasn't it? Just gone off, so fights broke broke out amongst the children. <coughs> <coughs> 
And then the ambulances arrived to take us all to the hospital. We didn't want to go to the hospital because we wanted the shower. So they had to rope, rope me tackle us to get us into the ambulance and take us to the hospital. So, uh, <clears throat> I, was, I was born all over the place. I was born in Aberdeen, and um, <clears throat> it was pretty scary. And the, the incendiary bombs, I can remember the battle. During the Battle of Britain, we lived in North London, and the whole of the city was just a blaze. It, it was an extraordinary thing. Uh, <clears throat> my father tried to get me downstairs. I was more bothered because it was snowing and wanted to build a snowman. But uh, eventually, that was the end of bombing, as far as I'm concerned. I think I've talked enough. Can you tell them what it was like when you came out in London? Oh, yes, sir. I told my class, but I haven't told all the class. Now, London being ablaze. Yes. Yes, we've been out during the afternoon to a, a party somewhere, and there was an air raid while we were at the party. And on our way home afterwards, we walked up to the top of our hill to go home. And then we looked across and we could see the whole of London ablaze. And the only thing that stood out was St Paul's Cathedral. The rest of it was all just bright orangey red sky with sort of misty smoke about. And it blazed for hours and hours and hours. And that was a really vivid memory.
all of the things were rationed and so the only thing we gave them was hot oxo and they were sitting shivering in their wet clothes, couldn't speak English and it was very, very sad. But I was very lucky to be alive because on the night of the blitz on Southampton, I was actually in the town. At class 11, William. What did you do when the air raid siren went off? What did you do when the air raid siren went off? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Brown, can you please <laughs> Well, I am to be a messenger boy because I joined it, what they called in them days was the air raid precaution people. And I was a messenger boy, and uh, I had to report to the post. If you know East at all, it's right the post where I was down near the airport. And we had to go around to the wardens, the rescue service, and the fire brigade people to get all the messages that they had and take them back to the control room, which is at the bottom in the under the old town hall in East Street. So as soon as the siren went, I dumped it in the Picked up a gas mask on the push pipe and away to my post. Then in the bottom end of Market Street, basically just off the airport. And we used to stay there and do all our messenger work. And when the old clear went, the chief ward used to say, You can go home now, I'll be back next time when it goes. So if it was daytime or night time, we went out and that's what we've done uh, until 1943. Thank you. Well, we lived in Cardiff in Wales, and it's a city with quite a lot of docks and also a big steel works. So it was quite a big target for the Germans to bomb. Um, bombing sometimes wasn't very accurate, and it often fell on houses. So quite a number of houses were destroyed in the city, and quite a lot of people were killed. And on one occasion, um, I was about five years old. And when the air excitement went, you went and hid in your shelter. There were two sorts of shelter. One shelter here was in the garden, which was a brown one, a forest, I think. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and the other sort of shelter you had in your house was a like steel construction, usually put it under the dining room table, and that was called the Morrison shelter. And so on this occasion, we were actually all hiding under the, in our shelter under our dining room table. That's my mother and father and my brother and I. And a very large bomb was dropped called a landmine. Now, a landmine is a huge bomb on the end of a parachute. And it came down about 200 meters from our house. And I can remember after the light of the explosion that the whole of our conservatory at the back of the house came rushing into the living room, past where we were hiding under the table, all the glass and all the woods and the wood and everything else, and destroyed the whole room. And uh, we unfortunately had some cuts and bruises, but otherwise we were safe. Um, the other maybe fortunate thing is that the, the landmine, when it came down, actually landed not on houses, but it landed in the city cemetery. So you might say on that particular occasion, no one was killed except those who were dead already. <laughs> And I remember in the morning we were allowed out, the children were then allowed out in the garden and we were picking up lots of pieces of tombstone which had been flung 200 meters into our garden and also lots of pieces stuck in our roof. Now we had no windows and no conservatory and most of the back of the house was destroyed, but otherwise everything was safe. <laughs> What did you take with you into your shelter and why? So if you had a shelter, what did you take in? Nutrition, you know, something to eat, to drink if they could, if they got a bird of glass. 
and also warm clothing. You have to take the next blanket with you. Anything you can grab. The thing is, when the siren went and grabbed and you ran, nobody let you hang about. Mum and Dad or whoever was you were living with at the time. And we used to go under the stairs in one of the last place I was in, and we about three years. And she was a lady, a spinster lady, and she never had children. There were three of us, but of course we were older by then. I was 16, and um, the other girls were a bit younger. But they, um, they used, she used to be very nervous, so we all had to go in. And as soon as we she got, we were complaining of bucks. Because it was a little hair and terrier, and she was very excitable. She used to nip if we didn't look out. But uh, we were just friends with the top of Well, in those days, she didn't do the top of that. But it was very frightening because she was, I think, being in a closed space. I think and all children get more frightened if they're not allowed to move or do anything. And there was nothing to do. She had no nuts. She only had a candle in for an emergency. And as I say, we couldn't take anything much at all. But um, some of the places that they were less lived in their shelters, they, they got other things, didn't they? Some of them were landed probably no more on that. Cheese, two inches to eight inches, 
T, two ounces, sugar, 12 ounces, margarine, two ounces, and milk, two to three pints. This is what your mums, and mums in our days, had to work on. Um, and I will say that my mother done a pretty good job, but I'm still here. <laughs> and, uh, we used to come in, and my dad used to say to us, uh, my elder brothers used to say, what have we got for dinner today? And my dad used to say, shut your eyes and eat it up and ask no questions. And that's what we were told. So if you go to the bottom level, George, this boy's got something to do with it. It's the last thing for him. How did you get your ration bread? And did you have to take the food as well? So how did you get to the ration bread? Did you have to take the food as well? Yes. 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 Yes.
week then. But my mum must have been as one of the women's friends said, very clever because we always had a Christmas cake. And I mean a proper Christmas cake, lots of fruit and icing. We always had a Christmas cake. But I never in secret. I never had a birthday cake because my birthday is Christmas Day. So there was a Christmas day, a Christmas cake with candles on. And I hate to tell you, but I was 70 before I had a birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw a man myself. But in those days, you appreciated what you got. Mine was very lucky with, with food and that because my mum kept chickens to start with. My mum was one of 13 children. She was the third from the youngest and her daddy died when she was sick. So they had a small holding farm and her brothers and her mum and that all had raised a pig. And so she was brought up to be a country person. And she was very good. She dug the whole of the garden, which was huge in those days. We grew our own vegetables. We grew everything we could. And she used to save the sugar ration and the dried fruit. You had coupons, as Ms. White said. You had coupons for things like tin books. You had a point system, and each tin was worth so many points, and you had so many points a month. It varied with how well off they were with food stores, and you had to exchange those points for tins of fruit or something like that. But it wasn't the the right. I never saw a banana from the time the war started till I was about. Because when I got married in 1951, it was still rationing, which a lot of people don't realise. But rationing went on for a long time, and it gradually they let the took things off the rations as the the uh, all our food really is imported tea and coffee, and the merchant seamen have sometimes forgotten lately because they had to bring it in. And they had to have ships, and a lot of the merchant ships were bombed from Torpedo. So therefore, we had we were lucky really that I had a clever mum, that's all I can say, very clever mum. I hope I did have some of it. <laughs> right, so we go on to the last lecture, some of the other questions. Class 11, Amy. Is any of the did any of your family join the services? <coughs> my uncle joined the services. Just going back to rationing, my auntie, a different, my, my brother's, my, my dad's sister, she lived in the countryside with her husband, and they kept pigs and chickens. So we were often quite fortunate that if they came to visit on their bicycles, which is about five miles away, they would bring us some sausages they'd made, or a piece of meat, or some eggs. It was very, as the lady was said, a great shortage of things. Um, but the other thing, I was quite small during the war, and they gave us supplements, because the rationing of eggs and bacon was so small. And we had this concentrated orange juice, because there weren't any oranges or any fruit apart from apples, as the lady said, and cod liver oil which were full of vitamins and were supposed to have filled up young children if they couldn't get a variety. And my husband says they had the viral. The viral was a, a product that's very sweet um, and sugary, but it's a bit malty as well. And it used to come in a jar that looked like, um, like a bovril jar, a round bovril jar. And we always kept it in our shelter. And um, actually, the family or the children of the family were allowed. If the if the uh, alarm, the siren went off and it was false alarm, we weren't allowed to have any um, viral. But if the actual bomb started dropping, then you were allowed a spoonful of viral. So it was very good for you, very nutritious. Sometimes you wish the bomb would drop so you could actually have some viral, you see. <laughs>